All right, it looks like we're pretty steady now with individuals joining our coffee chat room, although I do see some individuals are still joining with their audio, so I hope that works for everybody soon. Um, but I wanted to wish everyone a great Friday morning. Hi, my name is Douglas Nelson. I'm principal here at Wooten, and I'm happy to be joining you again for our coffee chat, the first one of the year. If you're joining us again, or if this is your first time, I certainly hope that you'll come back and join us again for the coffee chat. I think it's a very valuable time to engage with one another with questions that might be out there, or you know, the truth is information flows home to parents in all kinds of different ways. And sometimes I think it's very much value added time spent when we can connect and just clarify what is some of the information, how does staff see it? What are you hearing from students at home? Whether there's something new from MCPS that we need to talk about. I really hope that you find this time to be valuable. So the way that this works, just a touch on uh, how we frame the coffee chat, um, there is an option for parents and caregivers to submit your question in advance. And if you have done that, those questions have been polled and we're gonna start with those. Today, there are six specific questions and just as kind of questions go. Sometimes questions we're gonna spend a little more time on that particular topic, Sometimes they're pretty direct and straightforward. I want to encourage you to submit all of those. If we wrap up something really quickly, that's great. Sometimes there'll be recurring questions that we know we're going to come back to. And we'll, might, we might spend a little time on those topics each time we're together. So we'll always start, though, with the questions that were submitted in advance. And then as time allows, because we have an hour together, we will open it up in the chat or there's an opportunity for you to hop off um, unmute and just ask a direct question that you would like to have answered if I can. And a little note on that. Sometimes they might be questions that have really just been shared here the first time. Um, so there is a chance that my answer might be, I got to take that one back. So just be prepared for that. Um, and then sometimes I'll be looking into something further so I can get you an answer. Um, just a little note about our day today before we step into question number one. I am really excited if, you're, if your students came to school today. Right now in the backfield, on the practice field at Wooten, we have a big tie-dye event going on. And it is so fun. The music is playing. We've got a drone out there. And the students are out there tie-dyeing class shirts based on which grade they are on. And this is really a, a unity event for us. It really seems like some of the freshmen were totally getting engaged um, with this event because it might be the first time that they're going to something like this. And I'm really excited for our Friday. It's a non-instructional day. So there's other activities planned. There's movie rooms, there's study hall going on, and it looks an open gym and an open field. So it really looks like a lot of fun is happening at school today. Um, and so I just wanted to start by sharing some of the good news out of Wooten um, for today's event. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the six questions that were submitted in advance. Um, the first question that I want to share and give a little con context to this, I'd mentioned earlier in our framing that some topics are kind of recursive and we might come back to them time and time again. This question has been it was asked consistently last year. And I think it is very important that this one was asked and we come back to it at the start of the school year this year. And that one is around providing an update as to what is being done to prevent and address the anti-Semitism happening at school. It's a very important question. Um, so as we prepare going into this year, I'll try to maybe start bigger picture on kind of what we're doing to really work with this topic and then get a little more focus to like what actually happens if we have an incident. So the bigger picture, our focus for this year is to really come back. In the end, we are at a school that is focused on education. And our work with our groups here at the school has really centered around the, a part of our response, a critically important part of our response, needs to be what we are doing each year to educate students around this topic. And so we are coming back to some that have been in place. The goal is that students get taught in different ways through different subjects on this topic each year. We are going to revisit that, whether it is lessons through classes or whether it's coming back to specific guest speakers that we invite in. But we are taking one critically important programmatic step forward going into this year, and that is that Wooten plans to become a no place for hate school. And this is a program a number of schools in the school system engage with this program annually, 
It is our vision that we will do this annually at the school and no place for hate. If you want to learn more about this program and its focus, it is available. If you just Google that, it will come up um, and it will tell you more about how that is done. And in simple terms, as a school, there are certain actions we must take and certain things that we must teach based on the program requirements. And it goes across all aspects of your school from staff to students. And we will engage with that this year in the hopes that we will be designated a no place for hate school. And that that is then recursive and something that we come back to each time. So will that focus on addressing anti-Semitism? Yes, it will. It will have broader reach than that when it comes to just hate that can be present in schools when students do the wrong thing or we have incidents of that that occur. And that that was something that uh, definitely was a part of our school year last year and we need to be on top of this year. So the one information piece of information is we are gearing up to roll out a No Place for Hate uh, program here at the school. Um, a note about what we are doing specifically um, if there is an incident. So you all are very likely aware that I communicated that we had an incident in which a swastika was drawn on a desk that is very similar to the things that happened to us last year. Each time that happens and it was hinted at in the messaging home and I will continue to do that. We take very similar steps each time. We use the same step-by-step -step process to look at the situation. The goal is to try to investigate and to figure out who might have conducted that act. Um, it can be very hard when something is drawn, like this was not, it was a small swastika on a tabletop. It's very hard oftentimes to get all the information that you need to necessarily have a successful investigation, but we take that step each time and we will continue to communicate to you if those things happen. Um, and one thing we also put into place is we engage our students, that that might be very uncomfortable or they really feel um feel a response when an incident like that takes place. We create spaces for them in their school day to process and to talk about and engage with like, what are we doing to respond to that incident that took place? So that is what I will say to address that question now. If you have a question right now or a follow-up to that, um, we'll have time in this coffee chat to do that. So please be thinking of your questions or if you would like for me to clarify further on this topic, uh, be prepared to put that in the chat once we get through the questions that have submitted and we'll talk more about that. Um, next question. So this is about graduation. Is there a date for graduation or prom and other major events and will they be made public? Um, so a note about this. Graduation date identification and location is in process. So this week there will be a survey. Um, I'm gonna encourage all family and students in the class of 2024 to give your input on where we can go for graduation. That's taking place right now. Um, the process is already opened with high school principals to put us in the queue of how schools will go in order and what date will we get. I believe we are in track to announce our date just like last year, and that will happen right before winter break. If that changes, I will share with you, but it feels that we are on track to announce the date at a very similar time as we did last year. So we don't have a date yet, but it is, it's in process. And prom, this was really helpful for me. I believe we had a sense about when prom was about this time last year. I don't know at this time. So I will follow up on that. Um, again, we cannot confirm or announce that date until we know we have contracts signed and everything is in place. So I'll follow up and see where we are in identifying that. Uh, but one group that will really be working on the details about prom is planning. So same group that's hosting tie-dye event and the, the class leaders, they're really, really a part of that. So if any of your kids know some of the splanners and the, the students in that group, have them connect with the students. They have a good sense about what's happening with prom. Uh, next question, question number three today. Is there a senior calendar with all the different events throughout the year? We do not have a specific senior calendar, but what I can tell you is we communicate our events in very similar ways when it is time to announce them. And so some of the big events, like whether it's a college fair and you want your senior to come to that to like meet some college reps, whether it is an event that we hold traditionally, like Thursday Night Live, our TNL event, which is you know, a fundraiser for us, 
or whether it's something that everyone really needs to know about, like prom, right? Because everyone will really want to know where prom is and how it connects to graduations and senior breakfast, things like that. They will roll out to seniors over social media. They will come out through the community update that comes out every Sunday at 5 p.m. And information consistently gets shared through the assistant principals through the Canvas page that then sends a direct alert to students about the details and when something has been scheduled, you are very likely going to see events in those three ways. But as for a specific calendar, we do not have a specific senior calendar. Uh, this topic um, is about bathrooms. So the question is, would you please address the bathroom situation at Wooten? There were several times that my child mentioned that most of the bathrooms are locked and it can be hard to find a bathroom. So that's, I do hear that from students and parents from time to time. What I do want you all to know is how we systematically lock our bathrooms, how it works, and the reason behind that move. So the reason that we do lock bathrooms periodically and different bathrooms throughout the day is because it is a preventative measure in order to combat things that we don't want to happen in our bathrooms, particularly vaping. So it is a mitigation strategy. So far, when I talk with our security team, um, their review is it is an effective tool. It helps them. So I do want to share that with you, the parents. They continue to say that's a very helpful strategy. Um, I've also taken it back and asked our Department of Safety, Security, and Emergency Management, is this still the expectation? Are schools still to continue this approach? And from the chief, the answer is yes, that is still a mitigating strategy and one that is recommended of schools. And so I want you to know that to me signals we should still give this a look and continue to do it. Um, a little note about how we lock bathrooms, because I believe sometimes the students can get in a situation where they're like, everything is locked. It is not the case. Um, bathrooms, there is always one bathroom locked on the first floor and one bathroom locked on the second floor. That shifts after lunch. So if one bathroom, let's say it was in the art wing, was locked in the morning, that bathroom then opens after lunch and another one is locked in the afternoon. And so it is one bathroom and that may impact students. They might encounter that locked bathroom. Um, it is something I ask about. I check bathrooms. I walk around when I'm out in the hallways to make sure I do not find a time. I have not personally found a time in those checks where I have found all bathrooms or one whole side of the school in which everything is locked. One little note, there are times where certain building services assessments require us to close a bathroom for a period of time. For instance, if a student happens to like not make it to the health room and they get sick to their stomach and that bathroom requires heavy cleaning, then another bathroom may be locked for a briefer period of time. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And sometimes there is equipment that breaks. For example, I will share with you, it was reported that unfortunately we had a sink just kind of fall off the wall. So that requires a maintenance order to be submitted to be fixed. And so then we have an additional bathroom that might get locked. Again, doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. Um, one thing I want to share with everybody is I, I carried the question because I have this question. I imagine you might if this is something that is talked about around your dinner table or in conversations with your child. How long are we going to continue to do this? And the goal for Montgomery County, and we need their assistance with this, is we there were certain high schools that piloted, they piloted vape detectors, a direct tool and technique to address the thing that is our primary concern. They have been piloted, and now the goal is to roll them out to all high schools by the end of the school year. So if we were to get an additional tool, such as vape detectors, that very much may change this landscape. I share that with you so that you know that I believe that there's something out there on the horizon that may change this current, current um, landscape that is in front of us of the periodic locking of bathrooms. Um, so those are the, the notes that I have about uh, bathroom issues. Oh, I'm sorry, one that I often share and I will pass along to this group as well. If you're in a really tough situation, you're you got to get to a bathroom, you can't find one. I recommend that you just go into the health room 
and you're just in that situation, just let them know that you're there. The bathrooms are always open. The health room is uh, it's open and available. So that is a secondary move to make if you really are stuck and cannot find an open bathroom. Question number five, back to graduation. My child told me yesterday that it would cost $30,000 to have a graduation at Wooten this year. Is this figure accurate? Yes and no. The figure is inaccurate in that it is actually more money than that. Um, but it's pretty close to that amount. And what I want you all to know, because I know that there are some individuals who are, are really set on that, that home graduation. I personally have attended my first graduation in high school as a home graduation. And I understand the desire to have that. But to be clear and direct so that you have this information. What you must hire for and what contracts you must take out to have a stadium graduation at your home stadium is astronomically more expensive than reserving a venue. And there's a very simple reason. As I review all of that information that is shared with principals, it is this. When you go to a venue such as DAR or if you go to UMBC or Mount St. Mary's, whatever they are, certain venues... They have already staffed employees who then will run the required services that you need for that event. For example, if you go to DAR, they do not then hire audiovisual to come in to manage that event. It's already staffed. They do not hire janitorial staff. They do not hire extra security. All of these things must be a part of a stadium graduation for it to work for MCPS. So hiring audiovisual, and it can't just be for one day. Your audiovisual contract must be for two days in case you have a rain date or the uh, Canadian wildfires. <laughs> you must move. You cannot just take a retainer for one day and that increases cost. So it is astronomically more expensive to have a stadium graduation. And so um, that is the direct answer to that, your most cost-effective move, and that directly equates to then what cost you charge students, um, is to have uh, inside venue um, travel to an arena type graduation. So I want to encourage everyone, the survey is out. We really are interested in your input. We take that back and then look at everything else we must consider, so we really make the best choice for our school. So please give us your input. Um, and the last question um, that was submitted in advance is, in the future, could the school provide help with college applications during school hours, such as today when there's a wellness day? So I get the thinking behind there, but I do, I do want to directly address that. The idea for today's event uh, is that it's a unifying, we want all of our students together doing this activity. It's a part of kind of the culture. It's a setup to some of these other events that senior, or excuse me, that uh, class level leadership and SGA really wants a good turnout because we want pride and we want students to be a part of the events. So my concern would be allowing one class to not participate in that. Well, I think it helps them in one regard. It works against us in another. Um, but there are opportunities to engage with that college application process in other ways. So we will have a planning for the future event. It's a great way to get feedback on your college essay. And that happens, it just asks you to stay a little later on a Friday and our staff stay here and support, right? So it is a connection to the school that might not necessarily be during the school day. And I hope like for college, college essay support and work on applications, I know that students will want to connect with friends. That is of course important to them. But one question that I would ask some seniors is how are you using your advisory time? Or if getting some incremental work on your college applications, there are four time slots each day to get some work done. Now you might have some reassessment, that's true, but how are you using the other time if you might have time during lunch to catch up with your friends and engage? I know it's a huge balancing act, but I hope that for some students, 30 extra minutes of really unstructured time might help you in completing some of that work. So there's some thoughts to the last question. All right, so we've gotten through um, our formal questions today. Um, what I would do is I'll go ahead and take a look at the chat. If there is anybody that would like to hop off mute one at a time um, and ask any follow-up questions or if there's something you would like me to expand upon. I have a question. Um, this is Deborah. Following up on the, the anti-Semitic act that mm -hmm. happened this year, Last year, I recall, and maybe I got this wrong, but 
at one point you had indicated that you thought that you were close to identifying the individual or individuals, but yeah. given that you had to make a public announcement, the thinking was is that you kind of tipped the scale in their favor. Yep. And so um, I guess I'm just wondering, while I appreciate knowing what's going on, I wonder if there's any thinking about not being so quick to publicly identify them so that we can get to the bottom of it quicker. I uh, really appreciate you asking that, Deborah. Thing. I still feel the same way. Um, it was this most recent incident. I, it was a very similar circumstance. Um, so I asked once again, like, is there a way to work with this? Um, and the, you know, th what I want you to know is I feel like those that I'm communicating with in other offices, they're really listening to me. Um, but the guidance remains the same. The, I still believe that it is seen as more important to get a timely message out even if it plays the hand. So that is what we we did in this case. Um, but I do think that, that that really does give information. It's harder to to investigate if everybody knows all the information and that we're aware. Like oftentimes the element of surprise makes a big difference. Um, so I appreciate you asking that. Very similar thing this time is what I would say to you. So in a, as an essence, it's out of your hands. You're being told you have to report it immediately. Yeah, yeah. The guidance back okay. to me is yes, send the message you need to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some in the, the chat. I'll go ahead and kind of share some of these. So he, this is a great one. What is the school policy on teachers responding back to parents via email in terms of a turnaround time? So the expectations are pretty similar. I recommend, I hope for 24 hours, but 48 hours is what is permissible. And so if there is, uh, if you have not heard back within 48 hours, then I would recommend trying one more time or you reach out, right? Counselors or an administrator, like, there is an uh, reaching out to someone sometimes really is the thing, just a one touch point gets you that response because it's easy for us to connect with people. So after 48 hours, I would resend the message or I would reach out if it's a really pressing matter and see what support you can get. Um, and the other thing I would just keep in mind is weekend time or like time when school is closed. So 48 hours, it's possible the thing bubbles up on a Friday. And I know it, you'll feel like you really need that response going into Monday. Um, but I do believe like teachers have lives and sometimes they're traveling, like whatever that is, you might have to give time past like 48 specific hours. It's really professional work days. So there's that question. And why, um, here's another one. Why do students on IEPs not have code talk classes that are honors or AP? Isn't there a Department of Education policy that ensures students on IEPs have access to code talk classes regardless of accelerated or not? What I can tell you is it's something that looks at, right? That comes down to staffing. And so I will tell you my, as a principal this year, I felt like we needed more special ed staffing. I asked for it. We did not get it. It is directly proportional, like based on the staffing that you have, what classes you can offer as co-taught or not. And so we will take a look. Really, there's a whole process. Ms. Sloan, if you'd like to learn more about it, she very much is intimately involved in setting up that whole process. And if it comes to, you'll eventually look at certain classes. You're comparing how many number, how many students have IEPs and need of accommodations in a specific class. And then you compare it to other classes and where you have teachers available to go into those classes. And I believe that there are circumstances in which if an honors or an AP class has one or two students with an IEP, and during that same period, you have another class where you have eight students with an IEP, that co-teacher is going to be in that class. So it is by no means a perfect system, um, but it is very much looked at. And if you have specific questions about that, I would really follow up directly with your child's um, case manager and with the Ritzy, who can very much tell you what's going on. Uh, follow up on bathrooms. Can you report a status of functioning bathrooms, and female bathrooms? How are you fixing bathrooms? And then also coordinating locking bathrooms for functioning ones. We understand from our child that there are many bathrooms that are not, are barely functional. 
Um, so I am going to, this one seems to have popped up, but the students were definitely talking about it at the Board of Education. What I want to say to all of you is the staff that are going in there are not necessarily coming back to us and reporting based on their assessment that we have a, a high number of non-functioning bathrooms, right? But I feel like what I've heard from students saying about this, this question in the coffee chat today, um, I'm planning on doing a bathroom audit. I'm going to go and I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to see what we're dealing with and I'm going to give it a review. We're going to compare like what I'm kind of hearing about that. Um, so to the question about faucet stalls, um, we're going to go look at that with the, the building services team and the building services um, administrator. I'm going to see what I can learn about that. So I don't have anything to share specifically right now that we have a lot of bathrooms that are not functional. Um, when I was walking by there, we definitely have functioning bathrooms in certain places, but we're going to go look at it. And if there is anything, then we'll get work orders submitted and we'll see what we can do to fix like pressing needs if they are there in the bathrooms. Um, a note about yearbook photos. It seems backwards to have kids in either a suit or off the shoulder dress. Is there any way that kids can have their own stunt? Yeah, the answer to that is yes. So last year, this question came to me and we looked into it. There is no requirement that students wear that required dress. And I want you to know that there's language added and I, maybe it's, it's not as clear. We could work on that, but there is language added that explains that you may wear what you are comfortable. And then we advise that the primary color that a lot of other students are going to wear is black. So what is provided if you arrive is something that is like a coat tuck look for, for boys, or girls, like whatever you would be comfortable in. There is an off the shoulder dress that that is what is provided. If you would like to show up in something that is more representative of you, we advise that color and you are welcome to do it. Thank you very much for asking that question. You can do that already. So this is a question about students struggling to get to a bathroom to ba like having small accidents. I haven't I haven't heard that personally, uh, but I hope that that's not happening. Um, so Beverly, who asked this question, what I want to say directly to you, this is the whole reason behind the health room move, right? If you have a pressing need, I would default to that. Like if you know that the bath, the health room is there for that struggling thing. And that's not always even for students that are looking for a bathroom, right? If you you just need a place to get to expeditiously, use the health room. It's always available. It's more of a private experience. Like I would just say, go right into that health room and that should help you in that regard. Um, so Sapna, uh, I'm gonna share this one. And then if there's anything you have to add on. So many bathrooms have stalls that do not function. The teachers are not too understanding. The teachers do check in if a student seems to be gone too long. That is true, right? But when it comes to the bathroom stalls, uh, can you share a little bit more about that? I'm walking into bathrooms myself, right? And I know sometimes we don't have a functioning, but there seem to be stalls in there. Um, what are some of the things that you're hearing that are coming home? So this is just anecdotal, of course, my daughter's a freshman and it's only been a couple, few weeks, um, but she did mention that a couple of times, and this is two things. One is trying to find a bathroom that is unlocked. I guess she had did have the experience where she tried a couple that were locked and it took her a while to get back to class. Um, so that was one thing. And then she did mention to me that there she went into a bathroom where um somebody was in one stall for a long time and the other one wasn't functioning. So she left because she couldn't yeah. use um, the bathroom. So that was, that's what I meant by that comment. Yeah. And I think Sapna, I've got to be like, that can happen. Right. I do think that there are times our bathrooms get busier at certain point. Like there might be a time where you do happen to like get in. You're like, Oh, I'm stuck. And I'm not immediately going to be able to find my way into a stall. Um, so there I would go back to possibly pivot to the health room or usually our bathrooms. Like one thing I'm trying to encourage, particularly freshmen is as they get to know the building, oftentimes the bathrooms are just directly one floor down. So there is oftentimes a quick move that you can make and that just go down your nearest staircase and find the next one. And hopefully that will be open and available. I'd like to jump in as well on this. I've got a junior who's had this issue since freshman year. Um, 
and getting to the health room in a timely manner and back to class and not missing class mm -hmm. because there's one functioning stall in a bathroom and the others within proximity are mm -hmm. locked um, reduces her ability to perform yep. in class, period. It's not, it's, she is a junior now and it has been an ongoing issue. Getting all the way over to the health room and back Thanks she would her. roll her eyes at me and say, mom, that's not possible. And she is a junior and this is a, so I appreciate you, mm -hmm. Doug, Mr. Nelson, prioritizing this and getting into the female bathrooms. Sure, Dolls okay. don't lock. So she was told by a security person, oh, you don't know that bath, that sink doesn't work. It made a horrendous sound. And so she doesn't use that sink anymore. Um, this has been an ongoing issue. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see other parents speaking up. Um, she can navigate it now as a junior, but it was ridiculously challenging as a freshman. I do, and please know, I don't disagree. I I do think that the bathrooms, right? I hear about that a lot and I know our equipment breaks. It's really mm -hmm. old. Um, I, I do not have a direct answer to you. I like, know. I know as our teams, like just like security, I think they are aware like, I believe that, that they are like, oh, yep, that sink, that's a trouble sink. I would think <laughs> building services is going to say the same thing to me. Um, I know our response to work on like work orders and try to get individuals out here to fix them as quickly as possible. Um, but, you know, when I listened to students testifying at the Board of Education as the principal, I got I to gotta say they're pretty accurate, right? I do know yeah. that they face that. So my and hope so is I, that in I times like something really helpful. gets done here. What would be helpful as you, I hear you unlocking bathrooms. It's not a new technique. It's, it's a fun, it's a very viable, worthy technique to cut down on the bad behavior, but knowing functioning bathrooms in proximity to the ones that are locked and having that information so that you are mm -hmm. making sure that there is access to a functioning bathroom when one is locked and not, not locking the ones that are the most functional. Um, and, and having that information, because the locking has just added an additional complexity yeah. to less than perfect facilities that are yeah. hard to fix. Well, the one I would also share is like, you know, part of the reason of really sticking with like the decision to just unlock all bathrooms. I mean, we can go there. What I heard a lot from other students is that then they were intimidated to go into bathrooms if you had large, like a large number of groups, which is the thing we're trying to like break up and prevent. And they're in there and they're possibly doing something where you walk in and like the way the kids describe it is like, whoa, I don't want to go in that bathroom. Right. Yep, that's I've heard that. I've that heard a lot thing. of that. Right. So it, to me, I don't want to just to say it's like all night. It's not, it's a uh, challenging because it feels like there's, it's not a win, uh, not a win, win in there. Um, it's which one I guess is more of the priority and um, I guess input about which one is uh, is more preferable because I think we can go. And I think the, the, the solution is to get the bathrooms functioning. Yeah. And, it's and that. so we don't have the issue. Yeah. Right. I think to and me, my perfect solution. world, right. My perfect yeah. world is if we could get more functioning bathrooms, like a really prompt response when they break, because I know my building services staff cannot fix the things that fail or break. And if we could get vape detectors, so then I can just keep bathrooms open because the students will see that it's a preventative measure and we're getting like kind of real time data if that's occurring. So we can get in there and have our responsive security team like breaking that up. That would be the ideal. How can we as parents support that effort mm -hmm. to get those vape detectors into the so, school? Uh, I don't think that we are without support. So the, cl the cluster um, PTSA meeting really was all about doing the thing that I think has been so helpful, which is very effective and continued advocacy. So I think that's the next step, Sapna, thank you. But any other, any other questions or thoughts that I can share for bathrooms? Okay. Um, and just to revisit, I am going to start a bathroom audit. We're really going to take a look at bathrooms this afternoon and see what we're seeing in there. 
Um, and hopefully we can like kind of verify what bathrooms look like right now. I want you to know I'm going to take that action this afternoon. Um, here's a question. Uh, what is Wooten doing now or in the future regarding students showing up to after school activities uh, intoxicated? Are there steps that Wooten is taking when you suspect students? So, uh, First of all, if there is any information to share about that taking place, I have not had any direct reports about that. Um, so we monitor for that, right? Um, monitoring if we suspect that a student is intoxicated, like we see signs, we can smell it, whatever that is, we're gonna intervene. And if it's in an after school activity that we figure out that a student comes to the event under the influence, then that student is sent home and you must be brought back to school by a parent. And there's going to be code of conduct consequence for your actions in regards to that. Um, but I have not had a direct report or something shared with me about that. Also, if parents are aware, right? I would want you all to know if you're aware that you observe that, like you're, you can sometimes be our best partners. And I would encourage you to report that if you are aware of that information so that we can intervene and see what we can figure out um, regarding that. So is there a timeline regarding vape detector installation? Yes. The timeline currently based on my last question is all schools by the end of the year. And that is what I know. Um, a question about students taking French 5 in the classroom together with those learning French 6, Cinnamon A, B. Yes. How can a teacher give four courses to teach simultaneously? So this question was asked by Brenda. Yes. Um, so it's a challenge. I will tell you that, Brenda. It is a challenge for students to take those combo courses. Um, so we give a lot of thought about that. We think about which teachers are most prepared to tackle a combination course, but there is a reason for it. So one thing we are not staffed for, right, is to break those courses out. And let's say based on what you gave me here, like let's say we gave French six and then we did a combo cinema and AP, then the numbers of students, generally my observation, that they are too low then to offer the class. And then we're cutting courses, right? So one, I'm gonna share an example of students that were taking Latin. Latin, eventually the numbers went low and then we had staffing changes and we had students that we couldn't offer the course. And that becomes an additional challenge when you're cutting courses that students then need. But we have to have enough students in a class to offer it. And if they are too low, then they are cut. So uh, some one solution to make sure that they run is to provide students what they want, but to combine courses and in world languages is a course content where you often see that done. So I have a question. My son is interested in some of the clubs, but seem to have little information about them. And when will they start meeting? Will there be information set? There is an information session about this, Jen. Thanks for the question. So there is a club fair coming up on the 26th. This is your time to do precisely that. So I want to encourage your son in our um, in our gymnasium on the 26th is the club fair. There's some information about that. And all you do is during lunch, you have a chance to go from table to table to talk directly with the students who are organizing clubs and working with sponsors. And it's going to be a time to say, when do you meet? When's your first meeting? What's required to be a member? Do I have to come every time? Can I attend a certain number? Like this is really your opportunity to get information about clubs. So that is about to happen. And that would be uh, what your son should do. So just a couple notes, a little more on bathrooms. Brenda, I just wanted to say your note about the stadium bathrooms. I will take that back, right? Some That's helpful to know. We'll make sure that that is addressed. Um, the health room is pretty far away from second floor classrooms. The health room can be pretty far away from second floor class. That is true. It can.
So uh, this is a question about a basketball hoop and it connects to Frost and their basketball hoop. Um, the individual who asked that question, can you tell me a little bit more about what Frost has? Maybe not, but I'm I sorry, I'm on mute. Uh, Frost okay. has uh, eight uh, basketball hoops. Uh, uh, I feel uh, some boys that are freshman or sophomore, they, they like to, to play outside. And during that time of um, growth, mm -hmm. boys are interested, you know, trying to reach the ring and, you know, try to fit with friends. And a basketball hoop kind of feels it's a, uh, it's a social way of trying to fit in. Um, and I, I, I feel some for some boys, this will be a benefit. Well, it can be a distraction as well, but, uh, um, you know, between uh, after class or something after school, um, it can be helpful, mm -hmm. I feel. Okay, so I don't know about getting basketball hoops here to the school but I know other high schools that don't also that don't have like outside basketball hoops but I also have been in a middle school before we did so I'm not I'm not sure why that that change is there um so it's a question worth taking back and I haven't really thought about that before so thank you but let me pass this one along also if that is what you're looking for Mr. Marshall is one of our CTE teachers he I see him with a group that he will take students down just to play basketball in some of our interior spaces. And it seems to be just a social group that does it. So I would pass along his name. I don't know if he's looking for, for extra people, but he just seems to be willing to take individuals down. So Mr. Marshall, maybe touching base with him about that. Uh, he seems to have groups that do just the thing that you are describing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. At this time, we've gone a little quiet in the chat. Um, is there anything else that is still out there to address? I have a, another stupid question that I didn't want to ask until I knew there weren't any other questions. Um, how are school events like homecoming communicated to the kids? Um, I, I mean, I asked my kids and they're like, we don't know anything about it. And I know that's not true but maybe they're just not paying attention. I don't know. It's not like something I expect them to necessarily want to participate in, but I'm just curious how school-wide events like that are communicated. Yeah, it's and large. If, if I may add a little uh -huh. bit to this question, because it's important. Um, somehow we feel we need to motivate the kids to participate in those events, and we don't know what to tell them. Uh, like, for example, you started with a tie-dye event today, and I paid for a shirt, but my kiddo said, uh, I don't want to participate. And I I don't know. Okay. <laughs> he has the shirt, but I don't know if he's going to use it. So thanks for asking the question. Absolutely. So let me start with one. I'll move to the other. Um, so oftentimes the information that gets communicated because it comes from like SGA and a specific student leadership group it's like very specific to the student that's working on it, right? So some of the information about homecoming, like my first TikTok, it was from a student's TikTok where information was starting to flow out. So for homecoming, be on the lookout, right? There is There are some new things that we are planning for homecoming. And what I want you all to know is the idea here is that you're not coming back on Saturday to attend a dance after a homecoming football game. And there's a real reason for this shift. Our numbers for students actually coming to a homecoming dance are extremely low, very, very low. And so it really suggested we needed to kind of like come up with a new idea here. And so the idea is that students on the night of the homecoming football game can first come to the football game and then you can buy homecoming access and you're going to stay here for an event after 
homecoming. And I would keep it as simple as that. There's going to be multiple things to do. There is a room to dance if dancing is your thing, but for a lot of our students, it's not. So there's other games and other things that are planned around the campus for students to do following the homecoming game. And uh, this is a similar idea that kind of happens at Whitman that we observed and brought this idea back because we're hoping that we can really increase participation because if a large number of students come to homecoming, you might as well just stay with us and have this social event that is a little bit different, but it, it is structured very different than we have done before. So that is what I would share with you to take back to your kids to encourage them to come. I do think that it would be fun to have a place that is just identified for you. You can decide to do certain games or activities. You can decide to float into the dance room that's going to be provided and come back out and just chill and hang if that is the thing. But, you know, you'll have an after event specifically for students that is our homecoming event following the football game. So if your child's coming to that football game, you might as well stay for homecoming. Um, tickets are going to be on sale. And as we finally lock in exactly the things that we need to share with you, that flow of communication about homecoming is going to start through the channels that I explained earlier. Now, when it comes to encouraging your child to come, that's a hard one, right? Um, what I appreciate in that part of the comment that was made is that you're trying to encourage students to be here. I really do believe that when students come to school and they connect with the building, the outcomes are better. They're making friends, they're finding ways to connect here um, that are important. So I don't know if I can necessarily assure that like your child's gonna want to do that or participate in these events, but I would just say stick with it and continue to encourage. Um, it might not be their time right now, but it might in the future. Can I ask a couple of follow-ups to that? Um, sure. Uh, one question was, you mentioned the channels of how students get information. Uh, I know that at Frost, at least my daughter was used to, like every morning there was kind of announcements or there was kind of, you know, I think a group of students who were in that media class, at least they were all watching something that said, here's what's coming up at the school. Um, is there anything like that where there's announcements to the whole student body or it, or there, because for example, she said she doesn't know, she didn't hear of when the club fair is. So I'm wondering okay. how, um, back um, if, if that's a, if there's a channel that, mm -hmm. that is like kind of student body wide, or is it just yeah. kind of, you have to just figure out what to look for and where. We do not just do all call announcements, like where okay. we read over the, the loudspeaker, okay. right? Um, so we do have a TV production class. They put out announcements and they've released their first one. It's called Patriot TV News. And it does summarize a lot of what's going on. And it is through a YouTube video that you watch. So the time that that will occur is on Wednesdays during Wellness Wednesday at the conclusion. And it is also shared with you all. And it's got its own like YouTube page. So you will sometimes see it on the website. It's put in like our passing, like scrolling pictures. It comes home in the community update and it will be shared with students on Wednesdays. Okay, great. Thank you. And the other question I had was, um, you mentioned that in the past, there's been low attendance on the homecoming dance specifically. Is there an idea of why that's the case? And is it is it just the homecoming one or is like is, is also the other dances? I'm assuming there's, other prom and other types of dances that happen, social events. Is there generally low attendance across the board or is there something specific yes. about homecoming in the past? I mean, prom's our best, but yeah, I think it's it's low across the board. Okay. Yes, and I think that, you know, for prom right, and for homecoming, homecoming, the effect just tends to be that the students seem to get wrapped up in the idea that I'm gonna go somewhere to dinner, and I'm going to take pictures in Washington, D.C. And the dance is just the bottom of the list of the things that I've planned to do with my friends. And then I'm going to put on social media. And so I just think that my observation is that it's kind of like paying the price in that regard. It also seems that the dance for prom is secondary to all of that. Uh, OK, so this is a this is a similar case for prom, the prom events as well. Sounds like yeah, prom has better attendance. OK. Uh, but it still seems like the dance itself, right, is secondary to a lot of other things. Got it. Okay. Thank you. That's uh -huh. okay. yeah. So I'm going back to the chat. Um, this I is my love... oh, sorry. Go ahead, Robin. 
I was just going to say, um, one, my daughter is a senior and my son graduated. And I wanted to say thank you to you in the fact that you can see this year the focus on school spirit and, and school engagement. Um, I think it's really amazing. My kid has been to more things this year than I think she has. I mean, granted, her freshman year, she, it was COVID. So, but you can see the difference. And I really encourage you to continue the energy that you're putting into school. I really appreciate that. I would love to find a place where things, information come. It's not that the information isn't coming out just a little bit earlier. I think as it turns out, homecoming is also the same weekend as a major cross country meet and also uh, S SATs or ACTs that kind yeah, of stinks for those kids that like can't participate or won't get the full experience because of what their Saturday morning looks like. Um, but if you can get the calendar of things out earlier, that would be wonderful. Okay. Point well taken. Um, and oftentimes, Robin, I'll say to you, sometimes athletics like is a is a fallback if you're if you're the family that you've got to place everything together because you've really got to schedule it up calendar. Athletics sometimes gets it out before the rest of the school because they oftentimes dictate to us. Like homecoming is not a decision we make. The athletics department tells us when our homecoming is. So I would just pass that along also. And I appreciate the word about um, building back the school spirit. I think that's so important and remains so important as we build back. We build back a lot, but we continue to really kind of come back from the pandemic. And this is a huge part of it. So I'm glad to hear that your child's coming to a lot of things here. Keep them, keep coming. So that's great. Um, a note about uh, tutoring. So this is my ninth grade son loves tutoring and tutoring sixth graders so far for SSL hours. This year he's joined Stepping Stone organization at Blair High School as a tutor for underprivileged kids. I'd like to know if we can team up with Wooten to start this organization. So um, if it comes to starting an organization, right, there's a way to do that. I'm going to pass this along. Um, Keith Schwartz, same gentleman who's running today's tie-dye event is also our after school activities coordinator. I'm going to encourage you to start with him because we have a lot of organizations. And one thing that happens with that partnership is we've got to, you've got to make sure that you can find the sponsor that can take that on and has the time to do it. And so I would start with him and just see if you can feel out maybe some advisable next steps um, there. But the way that you get an approved after school activity is start with the after school activity sponsor, um, coordinator and sponsor to try to get then an adult that can work with students to get something up and going. Um, and a quick note, because there's um, in the chat about SSL hours, of course, like can have kids want to continue to earn those SSL hours. I want to encourage them to do that because there are some, um, some perks that come along with that. If you get awards for completing a certain number of hours, um, please be sure to, to submit your SSL hours. Chris Thompson is our coordinator here. And I'm going to have a note in this week's community update about when summer hours are due so that they can then go on the student profile. So there's a submission and a deadline for SSL right around the corner. Um, a note uh, about the blueprint. Okay, so as the blueprint for education rolls out and more students will be in the non-traditional junior and senior year, is there a way for those of us who have experienced this to provide feedback from parents and students' perspectives on FAQs or things that the staff may not think about like attendance policies? Um, is that, so this one looks like came right from the Wooten PTSA. Is that specifically to our attendance policies and our staff, or this is the staff of the school system that are really working on the blueprint for education? Uh, this is more for what Wooten could potentially share out to parents and students. So, you know, before the school year started, because my son is taking half days of, uh, at Montgomery College, I was asking, do it? Does he need to sign out after third period? Since that's his last period, what what does what happens? Um, what happens if there's a sick day? Um, what happens if he needs to come back and do something for advisory? Do we need to let him know that he's in the building? <laughs> like, how does this work? So those kinds of like nitty gritty details um, that you know a lot of parents have questions about. Yeah. Or I know you and I talked separately, Mr. Nelson, about what to do when they don't have advisory and they want to see the information that comes out in the wellness days and those kinds of very um, detailed things that parents may have feedback on that the school just either either did think about and didn't get communicated out to us in an effective way or things that just didn't you didn't think about that we, we might want to know yeah i mean the one the example you give the when, when we restructure wellness wednesday then we sometimes have to figure those out those are always important to get back to us um, 
But one question I have, Jessica, I think like, I guess my big picture is for the way, like for policy, oftentimes that is central office. So it's got to kind of be like, well, which office makes the most sense, whether it's career call, like whatever is happening for dual enrolled students, like oftentimes the policy comes from another office. Then it's how we work it at the school. And I think what's going to become ever more important is that parents that were clear and parents really recognize which specific staff members are in the specific avenue that you're in. And so if it's dual enrollment and dual enrollment questions, and I'm, I believe we will continue to see increases there, then it's, you know, Suki Yon, right? Or it's our DEPA, because they really have all of those details, both for Montgomery College and MCPS and what's happening at Wooten. So you really kind of like have to center around the DEPA. And then what we, you know, there's going to be a, a communication just this week where I'm going to announce that we're getting an additional staff member just to work on career pathways and how those are growing as a part of the blueprint. So there's going to be a new staff member to connect. And when it comes to career options and how do you do those, we'll have another staff member that's intimately involved in that. So I think it's going to be critically important to know essentially which individual's roles and responsibilities that falls under. Well, and I was just really thinking, like putting together an FAQ packet, which has information about how you functionally enroll, like in, at Montgomery College and how dual enrollment mm -hmm. works, but doesn't cover things like these kinds of questions of what happens, you know, what does a student do in, in these situations mm -hmm. that maybe are talked about verbally, but, you know, again, for multiple styles and for information coming back to the parents, if it was in some kind of written form, would just, it'd be nice to have. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Okay, everybody, it is 9.58, um, so we're just about at time, and the truth is, yours truly still has to tie-dye a t-shirt, so I still have to get out there <laughs> to do my shirt. So, is there any other quick question that I can help or support you with before we kind of wrap things up and end around 10 a.m.? Okay. Well, thank you very, very much. I appreciate the questions. I hope many of you will come back next month for our coffee chat. It'll be the third Friday of the month, uh, I believe. Correct, Jessica? <laughs> yes, it is yeah. um, October 20th. Yeah. Thank you. And it always follows the PTSA meeting. So please feel free to join us for that. Um, and I'll look for the questions. Please if you'd like to circle back to some of those, or if there's a question about bathrooms, it definitely sounds like that's one to revisit and some of our work um, that we'll come back to again. I promise you all, um, I will work on bathrooms. It's very much come through to me, so we're on it. And I hope to provide you some updates the next the next time we're together. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. If there's anything I can help you with, please know I'm an email or phone call away.